results. This is News 6 at 6. Now at 6, we are covering two breaking news alerts. This is an aerial view of the first one. Part of a busy road is shut down because of this crash. A truck tilted on its side, spilling its load on the side of the road. This is at the intersection of Orange Avenue and Sand Lake Road. The crash has the southbound lanes of Orange Avenue closed right now. We are making phone calls, working to learn whether anyone was hurt in this and what actually caused all of this. As soon as we learn more, we will bring it to you on air and on clickorlando.com. And police swarm a neighborhood as they investigate a shooting. Sky 6 flew over the scene. Just moments ago, we learned the victim is a man. Officers responded to the 7-Eleven near Lake Eola at Washington and Summerlin Avenue around 3.40 this afternoon. But they are not sure where the shooting happened. That man is expected to be okay. And tonight, deputies are urgently searching for a second man involved in a shooting that hurt a pregnant woman and killed the baby she was carrying. One man has already been arrested in the shooting. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ginger Gadsden, in for Matt tonight. And I'm Lisa Bell. It happened late Saturday night at the Los Robles Apartments in Pine Hills on Silver Star Road. Stephanie Reyes and Vince Deloney were shot. Reyes was 28 weeks pregnant and the unborn baby died as a result. News 6's Clay Lapar joins us now live outside that apartment complex. And Clay, what do we know about that man that deputies are still searching for right now? Lisa and Ginger, deputies aren't saying a whole lot about that man they're still searching for involved in the shooting that happened at this apartment complex on Saturday night. But an arrest warrant describes him as heavy set between 5'5 five five and 5'8. Five Nearly a week after bullets were flying across this parking lot of the Los Robles apartment complex on Silver Star Road, deputies arrested this man. This is Hernicard Artelis. Artelis is charged with firing a rifle into this apartment, hitting a pregnant woman and killing her unborn child. Deputies say Artelis and this woman's boyfriend were fighting outside the apartment on Saturday night, along with another heavy set man. When a fight started to escalate and shots were fired, Deputies say that boyfriend was shot in the leg and taken to the hospital, while his girlfriend, who was seven months pregnant, was also taken to the hospital after getting shot. Both of them survived, but the unborn child did not. On Thursday, deputies were able to get a search warrant for Artelis's nearby apartment and arrested him. Deputies are still searching for that second heavy set man. Today, a judge denied bond for Artelis after being charged with one count of attempted murder. Shortly after his first appearance, the Orange County Jail's website added more charges against Artelis, including one count of killing an unborn child. Is the charge of attempted first degree murder with a firearm premeditated, is that in fact a possible life felony? It is, Your right. Honor. That cousin who drove the boyfriend to the hospital told News 6 today that the boyfriend is doing okay and they're all happy that an arrest has been made in the case. If you have any information about that other man deputies are still searching for involved in this shooting, you're asked to call the Orange County Sheriff's Office. Lisa. Clay Lepard reporting live for us. Thank you. Well, tonight we are looking ahead to the weekend. Aren't we always, though? <laughs> Chief Meteorologist Tom Searles joins us now with the chances for rain. Tom. How many times have you heard me say I'm looking ahead? At <laughs> From Monday, a, every from, Monday. From a Monday point of view, <laughs> I'm looking at next weekend. Here's the satellite and radar together. You see the big monster storm building out here from Minneapolis to Chicago, all the way down to Denver. This is rolling this way into the Great Lakes and on over to New York eventually. Here at home, we'll get the bottom side of that for your weekend. Right now, we're doing great. Tonight's going to be pretty good. Tomorrow's going to be even better. But tomorrow night, the front arrives, and when it does, the bottom falls out. Right now, the living is easy. 60s and 70s all over. I mean, what a day this has been. Beachside Cocoa Beach at 65, 63 in New Smyrna. Across the interior, Orlando is at 70. Here are the lows tonight. These are all good. 50 up in Ocala is my cold spot. 54 in Sanford, 59 Cocoa Beach, 56 tonight in Melbourne, and 53 in Daytona. I'll be right back. I'll show you just how warm we're going to be tomorrow. Then we'll pinpoint the arrival time of that cold front. It's a game changer. It's going to bring rain and then the really, really big cool down. I'll show you in moments. All right, Tom, thank you. Mm -hmm. You can get breaking weather alerts and live radar anytime on your phone or tablet with our free New 6 Pinpoint Weather app. Just search WKMG in your app store. It has been exactly one month since a 15-year-old was gunned down while walking to school. Detectives are still searching for answers in the death of Alejandro Vargas Martinez. The teen was killed while walking to Boone High School in Orange County. Crime Line is offering a $15,000 reward for information leading to an arrest. 
New developments in the death of an executive at UCF. He was found dead at his home on Saturday. Investigators are calling his death suspicious. Forensic detectives were back at the home in Winter Park on Temple Drive today, nearly a week after first making the discovery. New Six's Amanda Castro reports from the home. Right now, Winter Park police investigators are not releasing much information on this death investigation, but we do know they were back out here at the home today collecting evidence. This as we're still trying to figure out what exactly happened here. Winter Park police detectives back out at this home on Temple Drive. Forensic investigators collecting large bags of evidence, removing the evidence from inside the home and from inside a car parked in the driveway. We don't know what police were looking for or what kind of evidence they took. But some of the many unanswered questions we still have tonight regarding the death of 65 year old Michael Redlick. He was the sports business management program director at UCF. Investigators say they found Redlick's body inside this home Saturday morning. They're calling his death suspicious, but they haven't told us how he died. Police say they aren't looking for anyone and the community is not in any danger. Neighbors tell us they're still in shock, saying this is a safe community and something like this hasn't happened here before. They're hoping police get crime results and figure out what happened. Winter Park police say they are conducting a thorough investigation and it is ongoing right now. They ask anyone who may know anything to give them a call. Reporting in Winter Park, Amanda Castro, getting results, News 6. A mystery in the water. Boaters find a body in the uh, find a body floating in the Indian River. Now investigators are trying to identify the person. The investigation is underway just south of the Max Brewer Bridge in Titusville. Right now, detectives are working to find out what happened. We'll update you as soon as we learn more. A 16-year-old indicted for first-degree murder. Deputies in Marion County say Louis Ortega shot and killed 18-year-old Brandon Hammett during an attempted robbery on October 26 last year. Investigators say the robbery was part of a scheme to get Hammett back. They say Ortega and four other men were seeking revenge after Hammett cut one of the men short during a marijuana deal. The election supervisor who failed to meet deadlines during the recounts in November's election is now suspended. Governor Ron DeSantis announced he is replacing Palm Beach election supervisor Susan Butcher. She has held the position since 2008. DeSantis says she violated the law by not completing recounts by a state-mandated deadline. He has appointed lawyer Wendy Link to fill the position. A former elementary school teacher facing molestation charges is out of jail tonight. Kevin Tyndall bonded out of the Marion County Jail overnight. Tyndall used to teach music at Bellevue Elementary School. He is now under investigation for allegations that he inappropriately touched a student. The details of what exactly happened have not been released. We do know that Tyndall was under investigation for similar allegations back in 2008. The Marion County School District is asking parents at Bellevue Elementary to talk with their children and call police if they have any concerns. We are working to learn more about the man who was killed in a deadly crash along I-4 this morning. The wreck happened just before 7 this morning on I-4 East near DeBerry. Troopers say a GMC SUV left the road and hit a tree. The victim, who was a passenger in the SUV, was thrown from the vehicle and killed at the scene. His name has not been released. The driver has been identified and said to have suffered minor injuries. Three other people were taken to the hospital with serious injuries. A 20-year-old killed in a home invasion will be laid to rest on Monday. Family members told us the funeral for Alex Correa will be held at Baldwin Fairchild Funeral Home on Weatherfield Avenue in Altamont Springs. It's from 11 to 2. Correa was killed on Monday at a home on Port Simber Avenue, about four miles from the University of Central Florida. Investigators with the Orange County Sheriff's Office said a struggle happened inside the home before he was shot. His mom told News 6 she does not know who would want to harm her son or why. Anyone with information is asked to call the Sheriff's Office or Crime Line at 1-800-423-TIPS. New information about UCF's misuse of $38 million. The university president says he will be hiring a new chief operating officer and a new chief financial officer to make sure this never happens again. UCF President Dale Whitaker says he will also fire four UCF administrators for improper use of funds. The school used operating funds to build Trevor Coburn Hall, which violates state university funding rules. An investigation was launched to look into the decision to use the funds. The report was released yesterday. Investigators did not find any evidence anyone personally profited. 
Well, you might need your jacket this weekend. And your scarf and your hat <laughs> and your gloves. Uh, Tom Earmuffs. Searles, right, is pinpointing and tracking everything we can expect, Tom. I got to tell you, it's beyond might. Let's go into you're going to need <laughs> some help this weekend. All the cold air right now is way up north. We're holding at 70 degrees in Orlando, but the big cold front is going to swing this way. And when it does, you're going to wish you bundled up. I'll be back to pinpoint the arrival of that front and what it means for your weekend. First, though, a local woman getting results after this, how she's working to make her neighborhood safe. You're watching News 6 at 6, getting results from Melbourne, Oviedo, and all of Central Florida. We will be right back. Live with Matt Austin, Lisa Bell, weather with Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells, and sports with Jamie Say. This is News 6 at 6, getting results. Video showing a school bus trying to get through a neighborhood prompted an East Orlando mom to push for change. And you can see why. Tonight she is getting results. News 6's Vanessa Ariza is live in the Osprey Ridge neighborhood tonight. So Vanessa, what sort of progress is being made? Let me show you guys. For some people, it's just a sign, but these signs right here is what that mother of three has been pushing for. This is one of six that were installed, but this is just the beginning. It's progress. <laughs> I'm not going to say it's no progress. I'm happy and glad that they listen and that they are listening. This is what Aileen Vasquez has been pushing for for months. In August, she shared this video with us. Almost every day, this bus has to maneuver around parked vehicles. To get results, she contacted the county and started collecting signatures to get the signs installed. So I went at night with my kids in the car and I parked the car with my kids and trying to get signature house by house. The county listened. It went before commissioners and last month they passed to have these installed. Six are now here, but more are on the way. We went ahead and addressed the curves first because that was a problem area. Uh, but we're now working on a plan to do the whole entire neighborhood with no parking on one side of the street. In the past six months, Frank Yokiel with Orange County Public Works says 13 neighborhoods within the county have requested these signs. Because of the demand, they have hired additional contractors to keep up. We have eight sign installers in the county and our sign install installers also work weekends to catch up on the work. Vasquez knows it's a process, but is eager to see even more signs line her street. Were we able to help you get results? Yes, yes, you did. Believe me, you were on top of that, sending me messages, and I appreciate everything, all the help. Believe me, because, you know, it's progress. It, it is progress, and I'm so glad, and I'm so happy. And Yokiel tells me the county and developers are putting up signs like this one as the development is being built. Yokiel says by doing that and giving these signs to developers right off the bat, he says the county employees don't have to go and backtrack and put in and install these signs afterwards. But for live in uh, Orange County tonight, Vanessa Ariza getting results, New Six. Glad to see that, yes, Vanessa. That, that is progress. I mean, all you needed to see was that video of that bus of trying to squeeze through, and you realized something needed to be done out yeah. there. Or just run those cars over. No. That'll learn them. <laughs> go go one of those big trucks from, from the monster. Oh, my jailings. God. Yeah, that's bang, another bang, bang, bang. That's it happening this it weekend. It says no parking. I know. Yeah. That's what made it first in oh. my brain. Are you going? No. It's staying on the truck pull or tractor pull or anything like that, eh? Um, we'll talk <laughs> later about why. Okay. It, take, it triggers me. To my youth is what it does. Oh. This will trigger you too. <laughs> we got a big lunar eclipse going on oh, Saturday yeah. night into Sunday. Uh, Sunday night into Super. Monday, I mean. So take a look. Here we go. You ready for it? Mm -hmm. It's going to be a big, big deal. Hopefully the clouds clear out of here. We've got the cold front coming Saturday night into Sunday. I'm prayerful that everything clears on out of here by late Sunday into Monday. So you can see this big event. It starts in the 11 o'clock hour. It hits its zenith. 12 16 during the overnight so if you could stay up till midnight bundle up and step outside into the cold to watch it you'll see a big beautiful lunar eclipse we hope as long as the clouds play along that's sunday night into monday for the eclipse the almanac page for today what a day huh overnight low this morning was 48 we told you yesterday it was going to be some kind of beautiful and it has been we hit a high in orlando of 76 degrees that's five degrees above normal nowhere near that record of 86 but still what a day. Even at this late hour, it's 617 at night. The sun is down. We're holding at 70. Wind support from the southeast at 5. Look at Daytona Beach. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, gosh. 
Oh, that's nice. That is great. nice. It really does. Beautiful sunset in Daytona Beach. 62 degrees right now at news time. Wind is calm. Other temperatures for you. Well, Palm Coast, you are at 61. In Titusville, we have 71. Melbourne, we're holding in at 67 degrees at news time. Kissimmee, 68. Ocala, 69. Sanford has suddenly dropped to about 66 degrees. Radar is dry for us tonight, but look at this. Big winter storm brewing up here rolling this way and the frontal boundary is going to come sweeping across the south all the way down to the southeast. If you know someone who lives anywhere from Omaha to Chicago, anywhere in Ohio, seriously, anywhere in Ohio, anywhere in Pennsylvania, all the way to western New York, on down to New York City, they've got winter storm advisories up for the entire weekend. It's going to be a big old mess. Here at home, hey, the moisture is building, and here comes our frontal boundary marching this way. It's going to come in, and when it does, it changes the game. Weather story tonight, we're clear, but still a chill in the air. Not, not a toasty overnight, but mild enough. Tomorrow, a good beginning, turning cloudy. Then on Sunday, morning rain turning colder as the day wears on on Sunday. Overnight tonight, no worries. Cloud cover is not a problem. But through the day tomorrow, here we go. By about 6 p.m., Rain is arriving on the Gulf Coast. By about 10 or 11, it's rolling into Marion County and parts of Sumter County. Then during the overnight, it arrives. Four, five, six in the morning. This little ribbon may have some thunderstorms on it. Shouldn't be severe, but you might hear some rumbles. And then by 9 or 10 in the morning, it's over. But the cool down is on. Overnight lows tonight, we're talking about 50s all across Central Florida. Way up in Marion County tonight, we fall to a low of 50. Along the coast, Titusville 54. In Orlando, also 54 degrees for a low. Here's tomorrow. Your forecast brought to you by Del Air Heating and Air Conditioning. Really good day, really warm, close to 80, clouds returning late. Here's the extended forecast. 78 does it for a daytime high tomorrow. Overnight low tomorrow night, 59. Then on Sunday, a high of only 63 and a low of 39. For Martin's birthday on Monday, the high is 58, but dry. All right, Tom, thank, thank you. you. Well, it is one more step toward launching mankind again from the Space Coast. New at 7, SpaceX teams just tried something we have not needed to do since the Apollo era. Also, victims of a timeshare scheme need results. I guess I got burned really bad. It ruined our credit, both mine and my husband's. Investigator Mike Holfeld tells how families across the country have been taken for millions trying to get out of their timeshares and how one of the biggest players in the industry is stepping up to get results for them. And all new at 7, dino-sized rumors that something big is coming to Jurassic Park at Universal. The evidence we've uncovered that may back up claims a major new roller coaster is coming. Oh. Get ready. We'll have that for you all new at 7. I'm nice. ready. Yeah. All right. Sports director Jamie Say is in. Hey, what's going on? All right. Well, a guy who is actually in the Baseball Hall of Fame is crushing it at one golf tournament here in Central Florida. I think Tom's a big fan of this guy. Who did? You'll find out. Oh. All right. Tease, Tom. Tom. Plus, a big game coming up for the Magic tonight. And there's a new man in charge of one of, of, one of Central Florida's most talented teams. Meet Alex Morgan's Martas and the Orlando Prides. New boss. Next.